Throughout the 2000s, the TV channel Nickelodeon released a series of downloadable games for the Nick Arcade, a feature on their website, nick.com. One series that received notable attention from the Nick Arcade was SpongeBob SquarePants, arguably the network's most beloved show. Many smaller companies would work on the games, and several of them would receive advertisements that would air as commercials on Nickelodeon itself. Games like the Diner Dash rendition were really big deals when they came out, but how were the games themselves? On this channel, we've gone over many of the SpongeBob Nick Arcade games, and to say the least, apart from the nostalgia factor, they don't have much going for them. Many of them are just reskins of other games, some look painfully unfinished, some you have to wonder if they even playtested them at all, others were just basic and like any other Flash game you could find online for free. Don't get me wrong, Spongebob Bubble Rush is still a timeless masterpiece, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Other games like the 3D movie had interesting ideas, but major flaws like the unbalanced currency system made it an endless farming session. It was likely there to keep people from playing too much of the free trial, but it didn't translate well in the whole game. So that being said, my expectations were fairly low going into the Spongebob games of 2008. So let's see what kind of game we're dealing with here. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Let's look into this. To set the scene, 2007 saw the release of a special SpongeBob episode called Atlantis Square Pantis. Many might recognize it as the episode that featured David Bowie. The plot involved the main members of the SpongeBob cast going on a trip to Atlantis because there's something about the city that attracts each of them, most notably the oldest living bubble. It was also a musical. Now my personal story with this episode is very similar to my experience with the first movie. I didn't actually get to see it when it aired since my household wasn't paying for cable at the time, but I did get to experience it in a different way. I had the console version of the game based on the episode. This was my way of knowing just enough about the special to engage in schoolyard conversations about it. I remember talking with my best friend at the time and sharing differences from the episode in the game. So clearly this game was a special part of my childhood and one I have a decent bit of nostalgia for. So you might be surprised to hear this video is not about that game. It's about this one, Atlantis Square Pantis Square Off. Square Off was released by a considerably obscure company called This Is Pop. They're still active today, but their website is, well, avant-garde, I guess you could call it. You can't say it doesn't get straight to the point. So let's take our own bus ride to Atlantis and see what they cooked up for the Nick Arcade. In this, the story is a little different from how it was in the show. We start with a map showing all the future stages in the game, along with a narration telling us what's going on. Plankton has raised an army of evildoers and taken over Atlantis. Now it's up to SpongeBob and Patrick to stop him. I'm not sure how geographically accurate this map is in the SpongeBob lore, but I appreciate the world building. You start in the Krusty Krab, and Mr. Krabs gives you a magic chest for your inventory. You then head outside and board the Atlantean bus to take you through each individual world. This comical text box dialogue continues throughout the adventure. It can be funny at times, but it's hard to imagine Patrick saying some of the stuff he does in this. Can you imagine Patrick saying, they really were more advanced than us? I know he was more of a chaotic genius than an idiot in the early episodes of the show, but it still seems beyond his vocabulary. Reminds me of the time he said, trusting you is my decision, proving me wrong is your choice. When you start the first stage, you might be a little confused at first, but it's really easy to get the hang of the controls. You use a series of cards to move SpongeBob across a board to reach the flag at the end. You have cards that can make you move a certain number of steps, cards you can fight bad guys with, cards you can use once and they go away, and cards you can shield yourself from enemy attacks with. The cards use up your energy, which is represented by a numerical amount. You have to use your cards wisely so you can make the most of your energy. Every card has a different number of points that it expends, and sometimes you get the same card but it requires less energy to spend or it does more damage. So you have to be strategic when choosing which cards to bring into battle. You have to cater your deck to the stage you'll be playing in, so you can fool around with the cards you have to see what works best for you. You can also find belts, which give you different levels of health and energy points. Some of them can hurt you more than help you, so choose wisely. If it lowers the amount of moves you can make, chances are it's not worth using. Your moves are everything in this game. You have to be able to move, attack, evade, and shield yourself for the best possible result. If you don't have the cards to do all of this in the later stages, you're gonna have a very tough time winning. 
On your way to Atlantis, you can make the choice to take a few alternate directions to unlock belts or visit Bubble Buddy. The running joke throughout the game is that only Spongebob can understand him, so I guess this is before he found his voice at the end of the episode. Patrick can understand him later without explanation, too. You can unlock coins in the stages, which you can then use to play Bubble Buddy's card selection game. You find the card you want, then you follow it as the deck is shuffled, then you select the right one. It's really easy, but coins are a little hard to come by. Now let's discuss some of the stages. Bikini Bottom is fairly easy to get through, and the enemies aren't that difficult. You can meet characters from the show like Squidward and Sandy, but they don't really have any in-game significance apart from being used as weapons for some one-use-only cards. It's also really neat to see which enemies from the show make an appearance. There's the Sea Bear, Flats, the Robot Who Ordered Coral Bits, Big Mac from Employee of the Month, I looked it up, it's the same person, Doodle Bob, and many others. I really grew to hate this blue guy who can sting you, he just always got the drop on me for some reason. Every world ends with a boss, starting with this basic bully guy. You really can just walk around them to the finish, but they get harder and harder to avoid as the game goes on. World 2 is the Kelp Forest, which somehow worked its way into nearly every Spongebob PC game despite hardly ever appearing in the show. The final boss is the Dirty Bubble, who wants to destroy the oldest living bubble so he can be the oldest living bubble instead. Creative motivation, I gotta say. The next world is the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard, which is another location that appears frequently in the Spongebob gaming world, but never appeared in the actual show. All of the different game developers must be meeting in secrecy to discuss its inclusion in their individual projects. Once you either beat the Dutchman or run past him, you head to Atlantis itself. It's about time. I mean, it's in the title. Let me tell you, the Atlantean guards are terrible to fight. They have incredible range and can hit you from afar. If you don't plan a stage with them correctly, you can easily get overwhelmed. On the other hand, the ones that look like the blue meanies from the Yellow Submarine are super easy. Eventually, you find that Plankton is using a mind control device on King David Bowie, so you have to fight Ziggy Stardust himself. Also, the dialogue here is a little weird. The cliffs are next, but this world only really exists for the dirty bubble to send Queen Jellyfish after you. Then you head to the suburbs and meet Man Ray. Oh, hi, Flats. And I should also mention that some bosses become normal enemies after they're first introduced. They get a lot easier as your cards improve. I like the suburbs because it actually feels like you get to explore Atlantis. It's nice to see the different scenery in every stage. It's always good to play through a background that doesn't feel like a blank canvas. After the Man Ray fight, you head into the palace where Plankton sends an army of robot Mr. Krabs after you. He also says he's stolen Gary, but this has no story significance and only encourages you to find Gary for a bonus belt. The belt in question sucks. The robot crabs are incredibly overpowered and can easily destroy you in the span of two moves. If you plan on fighting them, you have to separate them so they don't surround you on both sides. Also make sure you leave yourself plenty of room for evasion. After you clear the palace, you head to the caves to reach Plankton's lair. Here, you meet the sea rhinoceros, which are some of the worst enemies to fight in the entire game. Avoid them by any means necessary. You eventually reach Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy's lab of super acquaintances, which is in Atlantis, apparently. How did they all get there in that one episode without the magic bus? I know, it's just a background feature, but still, way to break continuity. So you can either fight the dirty bubble Man Ray and the Flying Dutchman at once, or you can just head to the exit. This is actually a really cool trio. I wouldn't mind seeing them team up more often. The final world is Plankton's Den. Here, you can fight these really annoying robot Planktons that have the most ridiculous range. As can be expected, this section is hard, but the final stage is as unforgiving as it gets. You have to battle Plankton, two robot crabs, the Dirty Bubble, Man Ray, the Flying Dutchman, Atlantean Guards, and a swarm of different robot Planktons. Come on, this is a little excessive, don't you think? So you want to farm and make sure you have all the best cards possible for this fight. Here's what I did. I worked on leading every individual fighter away, then I attacked with my strongest cards while using my best shield every round. This worked out for me and I was able to make my way to the Dastardly Trio. Being very careful with every move I made, I took out the dirty bubble and- Wait, wait, I didn't know we had that ra- Are you serious? That's it, I'm done. No way am I doing all that all over again. So I came back an hour later to try again. This time, I didn't even risk letting the bad guys get in close proximity to each other. 
I led every single one of them away and used my best moves using my red sponge as a shield every round. I had already used all my best one-use only cards to take out Plankton on my last attempt. It would be far too much effort to get cards of equal value all over again, so I just had to make do. Being patient and deliberate with everything I did, I was able to take out every single enemy one at a time until I could reach the flag with little difficulty. Then I finally beat the game. At the end, you get to see the oldest living bubble, which is... alive? Yeah, I know it's called the oldest living bubble, but I think they took it a little too literally in this game. Patrick takes a picture of it and pops it, just like in the episode. So by this universe's logic, he just committed a murder. The king is okay with this because Plankton can stay and be the newest attraction as the court jester people throw stuff at. And that brings us to the end of the story. Overall, the plot isn't the greatest thing in the world, but it's a fine vehicle for letting the game play out. The characters don't always seem exactly in character, but the dialogue is still funny. Maybe the addition of voice actors would help sell the image of Spongebob and Patrick saying surprisingly intelligent lines. Story aside, I gotta praise this game for a few other elements. For one, the music is awesome. I actually found myself humming it while going about my daily routine. Very few games have caused me to do that. I also have to mention that I'm genuinely impressed by the gameplay. It's similar to another Nick Arcade game, Krabby Quest, aka a Wonderland reskin, in that it's a strategy-based puzzle game. However, the biggest failure of Krabby Quest was that it lacked room for error. Every single stage needed to be done in one exact way without any wiggle room. You can spend hours on one level, do something as small as have a box be one tile off, then everything goes to waste. Then you can't remember everything you did and it becomes an endless cycle of frustration. This game understands that there needs to be room for player freedom. There are a ton of ways to beat every stage and you don't even have to defeat all the bad guys or find all the items to win. You can play this game your own way. The final boss fight is pretty linear, but everything else has wiggle room. I have to commend the developers for thinking about this. And at the end of the day, that's the crux of my opinion on this game. I have to commend the developers for thinking. They actually put effort into a Nick Arcade Spongebob game. I don't believe it. This game is actually really good. Usually when I play a Nick Arcade game, I just download it so I can record some footage and move on to the next one. This is one I might actually want to play on my own time. They actually made a legitimate halfway decent game. Sure, it may have taken inspiration from other strategy-based games, it's a whole genre, but it's not a reskin, it has time and effort put into it, the stages are detailed, it contains characters and elements from the show, and it adapts Atlantis Square Pantis while putting its own spin on the episode without deviating too much from it. I'm amazed, I didn't actually expect it to be this good. It's so much fun to try out different card combinations and see what works for you. Again, there are so many different ways to play through each stage, it actually adds some replay value. Obscure as they may be, This Is Pop really put their all into this. Thank you for making a great addition to the Nick Arcade. We've still got a few to get through, like the virtual board games, Clash of Triton, Truth or Square, etc. But with how good this one is, maybe the future looks bright for our videos to come. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.